Hi hey folks, this is a video about a number of manufacturing uh, defects, uh, with design faults, other issues. Um, there, uh, we have found in this particular model, uh, it's a Wolf Pup 16 PFBL 2022. So I'm going to identify the major ones and I will tell you what I've done to resolve them. It has been a lot of work uh, and I, over the years, have owned a lot of RVs. So I've camped for over 45 years. This one's intended to be our last and is also the fanciest one by far that we've ever owned. We've never really had a, a really high-end one like this before. So we identified an awful lot of problems with it. We tried to address these problems with the manufacturer, uh, Forest River, and with the dealer, and we've had no success with either of them. They just don't seem to be very interested in, in supporting their products. Some of them are safety issues, which are very significant and could have resulted in some really serious accidents, and as well as some poor design and uh, incompetent or uncaring workmanship, which I'll highlight in, not in great detail because I'll be all day if I tried to do that, but I'll pick out a few of the examples just so you get a bit of an idea of what's going on. So let's go. First thing I wanted to point out here is, uh, I got a little green tab here just to remind me, this is the water heater. Uh, first time we took this unit out camping, I always go to the same place, which is a, just a few kilometers. By the way, this is being filmed in Canada, so kilometers. Uh, a few kilometers away from a small town, which has an RV, another RV dealer and also um, you know, home, home uh, supply store. So you can get equipment and things uh, if something breaks, it's quite readily, to, readily available to do that. We plug the water in, the campsite city water connection and the first thing that happened is water poured out all over the place inside of the camper we found that every single water hookup and connection and all of the drains were finger tight and some not even that tight this should have been addressed at the factory they should have had enough quality control things in place to make sure they actually tightened things down uh, but they didn't so I um, spent a fair bit of time tracking down all the leaks that uh, were resulting from manufacturing, eventually got them done and got the mess cleaned up. Something that never should have happened. What's this green tape for? Well, I'm going to show you. And this shows up in other people's uh, videos about these units. You see right there? That's a double nut on there. There are, I think, a dozen of these bolts that hold the camper body onto the frame of the camper. Uh, after viewing the other uh, person's video, I went to check mine. Every single one of them was finger tight. I could turn them with my fingers. So I tightened them down and also added that second nut, which is a nylock nut, we call them up here, a uh, jam nut anyhow, just to make sure they can't come loose. Can you imagine what would have happened if I was going down the highway and the camper bottle's body separated from the frame of this unit? It would have been an absolute disaster. Moving over, this is a less of a, probably the same kind of a thing, really, in some, to some extent. This is the cover for the propane tank. Um, the only problem with it was it's just sitting there. There's nothing to prevent it from getting caught in a bit of a windstorm and going straight up, even though there's provision underneath for uh, that to happen. So I've added just this little rope uh, and a clip onto it just to make sure that it can't take off from the rest of the camper uh, in the event of a truck passing and uh, a gust of wind coming along or whatever. Uh, these particular units use a 12 volt fridge. Um, I wasn't sold on them originally. I've always had propane powered fridges, but this fridge is a real champ. It really works very, very well. And as a backup system or as a power system when you're off grid, it has what's known as a juice pack. And Forest River is very proud of those. They even have their own pamphlets and stuff about them. Uh, but they don't seem to know very much about them. Uh, so you can never find out how long you can expect the uh, fridge to keep running when you're unplugged from the main power supply. Um, I've had great luck with mine. Uh, mind you, everything was new when I had it unplugged from the main power supply. I went 45 hours with the thing and it was still running perfectly. We had a lot of hot, bright sunshine, but it also very hot weather, 30 degrees Celsius, which I don't really know what it is in Fahrenheit anymore. A long time since I've used those measurements. One issue I have with them though, uh, up here in Western Canada, we have a very, very cold winters. And uh, as a consequence, I don't leave the battery, never have left the battery in the RV. That leaves the question of what's going on with the solar panels up there. And so I called Forest River. They had absolutely no clue. Didn't have a clue in a shoe as to how those things worked. And they just said, well, call the dealer. Well, as I mentioned, dealer I had is not very helpful, or as helpful as Forest River is actually. And so nobody seemed to have any idea what to do with the electrical leads. Uh, once you take them off the battery and leave them there, what I ended up doing is making a couple of little panels, putting them over the solar panels on the roof. There's two of them up there and uh, fastening them down with uh, stretchy cords. And then at the battery end of it, I just got some old pieces of bicycle inner tube and uh, put them over the ends and taped them on with hockey tape. That's a thing up here in Canada. Moving along.
Okay, we're going to look at just a couple of things here. Uh, some of them pretty serious, actually. I'm going to crouch down. This is the underside of the camper, and those are supposed to be the brakes. I had no brakes for the first 3,000 kilometers. They were backed off so far at the, at the factory or wherever they were made that they wouldn't even self-adjust. So uh, that was a big time problem. The, uh, this is where the dealer really irritated me. They claimed they tested them and they worked perfect. They don't work perfect. They're great now that they're self-adjusted, but it took a really long time and it wasn't all that safe to do it. Secondly, do you see that wire loom sitting up in there? And you see those cables or those tie wraps that are used to hold it in place? Those tie wraps were not on there. That cable was dangling just a couple of inches from the ground. It could have been torn off any time as I went over things on the highway, which you know, inevitably you're going to do. Just a quick comment on the general workmanship. Really, how long would it have taken to move this thing over an eighth of an inch to cover that screw and not have this thing bent out of shape like this? It's just poor quality workmanship. Slap the thing together. It's not a thing that's ever going to affect the usability of the unit. It just speaks to the kind of, uh, of uh, you know, just the thought that they put into these things and how much they care about their product. Up here we have a backup camera. It's a wonderful thing to have. Uh, I'm sure you will use it endlessly, except it doesn't work. It worked once, and then it never worked again. I'm going to go inside the camper right now and point out a few things in here. I'll just click on a couple of lights. There we go. Okay. This is the uh, panel. It's supposed to uh, control the awning and the slide, which it does. The awning lights, exterior lights, water heater, and the water pump also are covered by this. Do you see that? Right now, absolutely every tank in this unit is completely empty. <laughs> so, <laughs> after all these years, you think they could come up with a tank monitor system that actually worked. Here, we have a corner which, as you can see, is rounded off. It used to make a very nice square, like a point, and it was extremely sharp in the edge there. You wouldn't think too much about that until you get up to have a drink of water in the middle of the night and walk right into it and catch it in the middle of your forehead. You'll never guess how that happened. But that is a very, very dangerous thing to have happen. Um, and it takes just a couple of minutes to think about rounding the corner off uh, to make it a little bit safer for users. This is the uh, radio that comes with it. It's, I believe, a driven, yes, a driven unit. Uh, the only way you're going to pick up an AM or FM station is if you are parked right beside the AM or FM station. And it frequently requires a reset. That's this tiny little dot right here. You stick a, a hairpin or something in there to, to reset the whole system. Otherwise, it doesn't work. When I talked to the dealer, a warranty person about this, she said, oh, none of them work. Just do what I do. Buy a boombox. Yeah, that's why I spent half a year's salary on this unit, so I can go buy a Yumba boombox. <laughs> that's crazy. <laughs> okay, we're going to sit back here for a couple of minutes and pick up one major thing. This is the slide. As you can see, I've got a bunch of stuff bought out of it right now because there are things underneath the slide part that I want to show you after. When that slide is brought in all the way, it comes to a space right about here. So you can't really get by it to see into the back corner. The problem is these doors here flop open. If you hit a bump or something, they will open up on you. And that is a real problem because when they're open and you can't see them from the door, you're bringing the slide out. These doors, if open, will hook on the inside edge of this slide, right in there. And that will immediately cause the slide motor to kick out, and it also will bend the hinges on the door, and you'll have to replace them. And that is not a very good situation to have. I think probably hinging them on the other side would have been a better solution at the factory, but they didn't do that. Um, but anyway, that, that is a bit of an issue, and one that you need to be aware of, because if you've got a unit like this, that's going to happen to you, absolutely no doubt. Here's a couple other things. First time somebody <coughs> excuse me, sat uh, on the bench behind the slide, they just kept right on going. And the reason they kept right on going is a couple fold. First off, that support beam didn't exist at the time. And there was one screw partly into the wall holding uh, that uh, structural beam in place. And that's the one that holds the seat. That's the seat portion right there and prevents you from continuing on into the bottom. Additionally, at this end, there was a screw coming in from the side like there, and it was engaged at the very most an eighth of an inch to uh, three sixteenths of an inch. 
So really absolutely no support for that beam. Uh, very poor installation job to slap it together and get it out the door. And as I say, the first person who sat on this thing just kept right on going and ended up down there. Um, as you can see, I've added a lot of additional screws to it, found structural members everywhere, added uh, that piece to it so that something's holding it up, and uh, that works a lot better. Additionally, all of these panels, I mean, how hard is it to cut something square? Apparently, in Indiana, it's very hard to cut something square, because none of the panels that cover these things are cut square. Consequence that they do not sit level, they do not match properly, and so I've had to add little inserts here, there, and everywhere just to get them to line up. Another thing that is an issue, well, let's come down here for a second now. These are the drawers. There's one under each. You can see the other one there. I pulled this one out so you can see. Those are the guides for the drawers. So the drawers go in, pull back out again. Those keep them nice and straight. The only problem was they're both lying um, beside the drawers because they were held in by one staple at each end. I've glued them back in there and countersunk and put some screws in there just to give them the additional support they need to stay in place. Uh, otherwise, it would just be an endless problem. I also want to point out the USB ports. In, I have another video called uh, Upgrades, Wolfpop P16 PFBL Upgrades, which talks about some of the things that you can do. And I'll just briefly mention this one here. This particular USB port, if you plug something into it, the lights in the camper would flicker. And so um, that's obviously not a good thing to have happen. So I replaced it. Um, but really, the, there's a design issue with this as well. It's over in a corner by itself. It's of very little use to anybody unless you happen to be sitting in that corner. It would have been much better served to be under the center of that window where everybody at the table would be able to use it. Additionally, on the USB port, here's the other one. That's beside the bed. That one heated up so hot I thought it was going to catch fire, so I had to replace it as well. And as I noted in my other video, for some reason, the USB port there, but not there, uh, boy, why? Why not put one on each side? This is a queen-size bed. There's going to be two people in it most of the time. They both need a USB port. I mean, what the heck, you know? So anyway, that's a highlight of a number of things that I have found as problems with it. The most dangerous ones, of course, being the lack of brakes from the factory. And secondly, the uh, loose bolts on the body, which um, could have resulted in a complete disaster very, very quickly. So that's what I've covered off. I've tried to work with Forest River and with the dealership. Neither of them have been particularly useful. In fact, neither of them have been useful at all. Forest River's responses to the uh, emails I've sent to the Healthline really amount to, sorry you're having trouble with your camper, have a nice day. And the dealer, well, I don't even want to talk to them anymore. I've gone the political route and contacted our MLA, or rather our MP, that's a federal government uh, representative here in Canada, Canadian Standards Association, because their label is on the old USB ports, and there's an international certification uh, agency for electronics. They're not, none of them are really interested in doing much following up on this thing here. I have no idea how these things get over the border, but somehow they continue to do so. If you are one of our American friends and you've seen this video, and you should ask yourself this question, if this trailer was made in Canada or Mexico, will you ever buy anything made in Canada or Mexico again? Our economies all depend on quality products, international sales and trade, and the knowledge that manufacturers will stand behind their warranties. If you're an American viewer, I suggest that you send the link to this video to your congressmen, senators, both state and federal, and to the governor of Indiana, whose state these are made in, and the quality and rep, rep um, Really, reputation is really something that is called into question with these things. I mean, honestly, I have a great made in the USA GMC truck. There's never been a problem in the six years that I've had that vehicle. It's outstanding. This trailer is my latest purchase, and it has me worrying about future items that I see with a made in USA label or the stars and stripes on them, and that shouldn't be the case. I know other people have these issues too. I've talked to other people. These things cost a lot of money, and this really needs to be addressed. If you buy a toaster at Walmart, yes, we have them here too, and it didn't work, you would take it to Walmart and they'd replace it, or at least address it. But not Forest River. Uh, they don't seem very willing to look after these things at all. So please take a look at my other video, the Wolf Pub 16 PFBL upgrades uh, and improvements. It shows a lot of things that I have added to this unit that probably should have been there in the first place and will give you an awful lot better use out of it. This is a good unit now that all these issues are resolved. I'm very happy with it, but it just should not have had to deal with these issues and especially the safety concerns. That's very disturbing. Talk to you later. Thanks for watching.